Hello there, it's Coach Ikram, and welcome to our third video on thermochemistry. This is going to be on thermochemical equations or thermochemical stoichiometry. This is short, sweet, to the point, and best of all, it uses skills that you already know and love, like stoichiometry. So let's go ahead and get started. A thermochemical equation includes the energy as either a product or a reactant. And the thermochemical equation must be balanced. So that's kind of a, a tie over from everything else we've ever been doing about uh, equations and reactions. They have to be balanced. And the phases when you're doing these must be included for each substance. So that's just a handy trick to remember. All right, so let's start by just beginning with, with an actual thermochemical equation here. If you look at what we're dealing with here, we've got four iron solids plus three oxygen gases yields two moles of iron three oxide solid plus 1625 kilojoules as a product. So it says, does this reaction release heat or absorb heat? If the 1625 kilojoules is on the right-hand side of the equation, it is a product, which means it is being released as a product of the reaction in the same way that this is a product of the reaction. So, therefore, it is releasing that heat. How much? It's going to be the value that's given to you, 1625. This value is dependent, however, on the moles that are here. So for every four, four moles of iron, you get the 1625. Every three moles of the O2, that's what you get. So that's kind of an important uh, factoid to remember. What does the kilojoules mean? means kilojoules, and it is a measurement of heat. Is this endothermic or exothermic? Remember back to video one, we talked about where our heat was as a, a product or reactant. And remember, if it is a product, it is exothermic. And then it says, what would change in HB? And remember, this is our energy gained or lost in the reaction. B, if you started with two moles of iron, and up here we started with four, so, if you, instead of starting with four, if you started with two, you can do stoichiometry for it. You can realize that that's half of what we have here. So, 1625 divided by two is going to be equal to, and I have it written down somewhere, 812.5. Boom. There we go. If we were going to graph that reaction that we just dealt with in terms of potential energy. Remember, we talked about energy in video one. This is an exothermic reaction, so I'm going to draw it like this. This is what we start with. We've got our iron and we've got our oxygen. And this is what we're ending with. We've got our iron three oxide over here. This difference right here is this value, 1625 kilojoules. That is what we're actually losing when we go from the products to the reactants. That is our potential energy that we are losing. So it shows you in both equation form and graph form that we have a loss in overall energy. So if we look at another example here, okay, we've got carbon and sulfur, and then we're adding 89.3 kilojoules as a reactant this time around. And then that's our product. Is the heat released or absorbed in this thermochemical reaction? If our heat is a reactant, that means you are adding, you need that heat as a reactant in order to produce your product. So it's going to be absorbed. How much? Again, it's the value that's given to you. Is this endothermic or exothermic? Because you're absorbing that heat and you're taking it on as a reactant, it is endothermic. And then it says, what is the change in H of the reverse reaction? The reverse reaction would be if you did this backwards. If you flip this whole thing around and instead had the arrow going this way, you'd have 2CS2L yields C. Sorry, my handwriting's atrocious. C. And then you would have whoop, right there negative 89.3. If you change the direction of your equation, the sign of your change in H is going to change. Because remember, if we're going in that first direction up here at the top, that is endothermic. If we go backwards, it becomes an exothermic reaction. So you'd really be, let me correct this, you'd really have it added there as a product. But if you were writing it separately as a change in H, it would have the negative, just to clarify. Um, so if you rewrite the equation like this, and you had it going this way, this would be a positive. But if you, if you, write it separately as a change in H, then you include that negative because now it's an exothermic. You're talking about change in H here, just to clarify that. So if we're going to write this one, 
Remember, this is endothermic, so something that looks sort of like that. We've got C and 2S here, 2CS2, and then the energy that's going to be absorbed is 89.3 kilojoules. And that is an endothermic reaction. So we can use stoichiometry to predict the energy outcomes of reactions if we know the change in H. That's the enthalpy change. These values depend on the number of moles of the reactants and the products that are involved. So, for example, and we talked about this in that kind of first example that we did, if we've got this equation, one mole to one mole to one mole equals 65.2 kilo, or sorry, um, releases 65.2 kilojoules of energy, and you multiply that whole equation by two, and now you have two moles, two moles, and two moles, you also have to apply that factoring by two to your energy. So that would become 130.4 kilojoules which are being released. So your energy that's being released or absorbed is entirely dependent on the number of moles that you have in your products and your reactants. All right, so let's practice that. We've got the example written right below. Um, it says calculate the heat change in kilojoules for the conversion of 10.1 grams of H2 gas to HF gas, um, hydrogen fluoride or hydrofluoric acid gas, at a constant pressure. Let me rechange that. Hydrogen fluoride gas. It's a correct way of saying that at constant pressure. So we're going to do this with stoichiometry. This is my given 10.1 grams of H2 gas. Okay, I'm going to start with my given like I always do up here. And I'm going to change it to moles because remember this equation is in moles. That's how we read it. So 10.1 grams, 0.01 grams or 0.16 grams. That's the molar mass of H2 in every one mole. And then one mole of H2, we have negative 536 kilojoules. Okay. The enthalpy as it is now is not part of my thermochemical reaction. It's written off to the side like this. So because I'm not showing it as a product, I have to show that it's negative, which means it's being released. If I added this in, I would just add it as a product. That's kind of that, you know, it's 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 positive when it's in the equation, but when you write it off to the side, you have to dictate it's exothermic that it's being released, so you put the negative sign. So I put the negative 536 in here, work it out like stoichiometry, and get negative um, 2690 kilojoules, and that's using significant figures. Let's look at this one. Go ahead and see if you can solve it using the, the strategy that we used on the previous slide. All right, I'm going to pull this out, and we're going to see how you did. So the question said, what mass of Fe2O3, or iron 3 oxide, was combusted in the thermite reaction of 2,577 kilojoules of energy were released? So that's our given, 2,577 kilojoules. Then we know that for every 851 kilojoules, okay, we have one mole of Fe2O3. So where is that? Right here. Fe2O3. Okay? And then for every one mole of that, we have 159.687 grams of Fe2O3. That's the molar mass of iron 3 oxide. And when we solve it out, we get 483.565 grams. And yes, this value is negative, but when you plug that in, remember, if you, you can't get a negative grams for this. So this would end up being a positive number. You get 483, not negative 483. All right, that's all we got. So go ahead and redo any of the equations or redo any of the problems that you didn't understand. Write down any questions, and we will go over them in class. Thanks.